So now we're going to go ahead and create a new field for our recipe ingredient. And I'm going to go ahead and come under here and say quantity as float. And it's going to be models dot float field and blank being true and null being true. Go ahead and save that. And I'm going to go ahead and run my migration. So python manage.py make migrations and python manage.py migrate. So how are we going to create this quantity as float field? So this is actually going to be a new utility function inside of our recipes. We'll go ahead and say utils.py. So inside of that app, then we're going to jump over to github or gist.github.com slash cutting for entrepreneurs. And we're going to go and look for the number string to float. Granted, this will also be in the repository by the time you're watching this, but the gist will be the one that I update if necessary. And so I'm going to go ahead and just grab this, copy it, and we're going to bring it into our utility here. Now, it gives you some data that about this. It just kind of explains some things about this, but I'll just go ahead and mention that we're going to pass in some sort of amount string, so specifically a string, and then it's going to return a float if it is a float or if it can be a float, as in if it's one and one half, it's going to return 1.5. If it's 32, it's going to return 32.0. If it's ABC, it's going to return ABC with the Boolean flag on whether or not it actually did convert it into a float. Okay, so now, now that we have this utility function here, when do I actually want to set this? Now, this is going back to that override save method. Remember, I like to use the override save method when it's automatically generating a field from another field. So in here, self and args and keyword args, and then super, and then save args and keyword args. Okay, so the quantity will just be self.quantity. And we can update this pretty much any time that we save this. If I change the quantity, things change. So how do we actually use that method? Well, let's bring it in. So right above here, we'll do from.utils import number string to float. And so now I'll go ahead and say QTY as float and QTY as float success uses that function, passes in QTY. And all we're going to do here is say, if it's successful, then we will use self dot quantity as float equaling to that new QTY as float. That's it. Okay. So let's go ahead and give this one a shot. So let's go ahead and make sure the server's running first. And it looks like maybe I didn't save everything. There we go. And so the server's running. Let's go into a recipe object here. We should see now quantity as float. Notice it says one half. I'm gonna hit save and continue. And nothing changed. So let's turn it to one third because I actually didn't change that recipe at all. So now I got, I'm gonna go ahead and save, save and continue. One third and now it's showing it as a quote as quantity as a float number, okay? So what if I change it to two and a third? Same thing, it should change it to a float number. Cool. So the reason we're doing this has everything to do with the fact that the user is implementing that quantity. Now, if they put a quantity in there that is nonsense, well, either we don't wanna change it or we wanna turn it into something different. So really, I do want the else clause here and say self dot quantity as float being whatever that nonsense would have been to just none, right? So that's actually important, I think. So again, the nonsense coming in, save and continue, and now it has no quantity value at all. Okay, so the quantity as float, I actually do not ever want to be able to change that. I want that to automatically happen. So inside of the admin, in our inline here, remember those read only fields from below? Well, quantity as float 
can now fit in with those read-only fields. And so if I refresh in here, I've got nothing, quantity as float. And if I do 32.3, hit save and continue, still 32.3 on both of those, right? So I think this is actually really, really nice because it allows me to write fractions both as you know a decimal place or literally fractions like that. And most of the time, it's not gonna be a number like this. Most of the time, it's probably gonna be like you know one and one half. At least that's been my experience with recipes, not like one and one thirty second. Could you imagine? Maybe, but probably not. So in, in any case, you'll see quantities a little bit more like this. So this quantity as float is pretty nice. So naturally with this, we actually do wanna test this one again. So going back into our tests, because of course, whenever you write a new feature to a model, especially, we are gonna to wanna to test it. So now we're gonna define test quantity as float, takes in self. And so in this case, what we are wanting to do is actually making a few more recipe items. I do have one, so this is actually a good sign. So at least one of them should show it. So I'll go ahead and make another one. And this one will be gibberish. Okay, so the first one should actually have a float value. Second one should not. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab those names. So it's A and B. So self.assert not empty or not null. And then that's going to be self dot the recipe ingredient dot quantity as float. And then assert null will be the other one. Okay. So I don't actually have to test on whether or not they are valid floats because I'm not setting it anywhere other than that save method. So let's go ahead and test it out. Python manage.py, test recipes, and here we go. And we got some failures. Okay, so naturally, it's not surprising that there's failures actually because of uh, the recipes themselves. So let's go ahead and verify our counts here. Recipe ingredients, this should be two. Recipe ingredients, two, and so on. That's what happens when you update things a little bit. Recipe ingredient set again, two. Let's try it again. Okay, and this is again why we do tests. We wanna make sure that these things are validated and we get assert not null. Well, not null feels like that's what it should be, right? Like the field itself can be null, so why isn't the assertion error also null? Well, it's assert is none or is not none. So in this case, we want is not none and then one is none. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and run it. I do this all the time where it's like, oh yeah, it shouldn't be null. That seems like a reasonable name to name it. But there we go. So now it's actually doing that validation for us um, or at least verifying that that model is working correctly and it is creating this float. So this certainly begs the question, which method is better to have a validator directly on the field or to have a separate field that then just creates it. And if it can't create it, it'll just leave it as none. Now, in my case, this second method is actually going to be better, but it's still really useful to know about this validation method. And so I will be coming back to this unit method in the future on when we are gonna automatically set it. But you know, the chance is really good that if we are automati automatically setting it, we can actually circumvent this altogether, um, which I can show you just really quickly. So if I go into Python manage.py shell, I'm gonna go ahead and do from recipes.models, we're gonna import the recipe. Actually, we'll just go ahead and import everything just for the purposes of this. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab a recipe with QS, or let's go ahead and say, R equals to recipe.objects.first. Okay, so we've got a recipe now. And we'll create a recipe ingredient with objects.create this time. The recipe being equal to R, the name being hello there, let's delete this, or something like that. 
the quantity, we can put it whatever we'd like. Unit now, I'm gonna just give it a whatever unit. I'm gonna hit enter. Hey, what do you know, it created it. It didn't actually do a validation error. So if we were auto-generating these units, this would actually end up working. Uh, it, it circumvents the, the validator, which is why also in our test, we did the dot full clean to ensure that that validations actually went through. Now, if I were to wanna save something like this, I would just come in and do not save, right? Of course it raises the validation error, so we wouldn't ever actually want to save it. Um, but the idea here is this full clean method prevents it from ever creating it into the database, or at least it seems like it does. The only thing that's actually preventing this from going into the database is calling dot save on it. Right? Like I never called dot save on it, right? But of course it does raise an exception in our case, but in any case, so that is how we would automatically set it. But like I said, it'd be better to have two of these fields, like essentially what does the user put in and then what does my system automate, right? Um, in this case, it'd be what does the user put in and what does my system automate? We still want the user to put in the correct units of measure. So it's still a really good validation. Whereas the quantity, yeah, same thing. Perhaps we also want to put in that same sort of validation and we can use this exact same feature. That's something I'll use, let you guys figure out on your own. Uh, but for now, that's it for automatically setting some variables that we need. Let's actually see them in action.